If you're the owner of a 2019 and newer Silverado 1500 and you're looking to level your truck using some very high quality components from an industry leader, well then look no further than this Eibach Pro Truck Lift Stage 2 system that we have here today. Now, when installed, this kit will be able to fit a set of 33 inch tires thanks to the two inches of additional front end lift, thanks to the adjustable coilover design, and will even include brand new matching dampers here for the rear, offer right around that 12 to $1,300 price point. Now the kit that we're talking about here today is a combination of iBox two core components, their dampers and of course their legendary springs. Now traditionally when talking leveling kits, truck owners do have a couple of options to choose from. The more affordable way is no doubt using a puck style spacer on top of your factory suspension to get that desired lift or level. Now these are the more cost effective way to achieve more front end height to fit maybe a bigger set of wheels and tires or maybe get a bit more ground clearance but that's pretty much it. They don't typically offer any benefits outside of that. But then you have something like this, which is a completely new set of suspension from the gang at iBox, starting with these coilovers for the front, which are going to deliver, I would say two to three inches in additional front end lift over your factory suspension due to the adjustable nature of the coilover design. As you can see right here, the spring is gonna ride on this adjustable perch. The body of the shock itself is threaded, thus giving you the ability to kind of change that perch height if you'd like. Uh, what I'll suggest is just install them right out of the box. They are preset uh, for about two inches of front end lift out of the box, which does help deliver a very nice leveled stance. Now, a nice thing about this kit, again, you're not just getting front coilovers, but you're also getting a matching set of shocks here for the rear. This particular kit, even though they call it a pro lift kit, uh, the rear end height really doesn't change all that much, if at all. So I would say this is more of a glorified leveling kit, but you are again getting some very, very nice components here with both front and rear setup. But what do you say we focus in a little bit more on these quality components, talk about the build a little bit more. Always like to point out guys, iBox stuff, at least in this case, engineered, designed, built right here in the USA using very high quality components. Now both the front coilovers along with those rear shocks do utilize a true mono tube design. I like that for performance applications, delivers a more consistent uh, performance overall with less cavitation. This particular piston is a 46 millimeter internal piston here, nitrogen fill of course and uh, that front coilover we cannot forget to talk about because these guys are equipped with iBox proprietary off-road race springs. Those are gonna to contribute to a little bit more control off-road along with a sportier ride on the road. Now the bodies of both the front coilovers and the rear shocks, even the top mount here of the coilover itself, they're all gonna utilize an anodized aluminum construction and are given a limited lifetime warranty here, which is a bit of a rarity in the suspension world and is a testament to the iBox build quality. Moving into our pricing segment, and I think you'll find at around that $1,200 to $1,300 mark, the iBot kit is gonna live kind of that middle of the road category between those very, very budget-friendly puck-style leveling kits uh, on the lower end of the spectrum, and then all the way up to kits like the Cognito Motorsports, which is gonna kick in similar components to this, but also add things like upper control arms uh, for around the $2,200 to $2,300 mark. So that's about a thousand bucks more than the iBot kit that we have today. Uh, certainly, I would say similar components as far as dampers are concerned. You're just getting a little bit more in regards to that Cognito Motorsports kit. But again, if you're looking for an improved ride quality, both on and off-road, going with something like this is certainly gonna be a much better bet, in my opinion, than just slapping on a, a puck style spacer and calling it a day. All right, guys, so we've talked about the kit here from iBach. Uh, we showed you some of the beauty shots before and after. Now we wanna show you what it takes to get everything installed on your Silverado at home. Site's gonna call this one a soft three out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter at least four hours or so to complete from start to finish, depending on how fast you like to work. Now the rears are certainly gonna be the easier part of the job, no doubt. Front's gonna be where you're spending most of your time here with this particular job. As always, guys, when you're tweaking your suspension this much, leveling it out, um, kind of wrenching in there, please take your truck to get aligned after the fact. Not only will it just drive much better, but your tires will thank you in the long run. But now we're gonna throw it out to the guys in the shop for our detailed walkthrough and tool breakdown. Check it out. For this install, you will need an impact, a ratchet, long extension, swivel adapter, 
3 8 to half inch adapter if necessary, 10, 16, 17, and 21 millimeter sockets, 18 millimeter swivel socket, 14, 15, 16, and 21 millimeter wrenches, angle cutters, a ball joint service tool, a pry bar, a tape measure for adjusting ride height, a bungee cord, and the provided spanner, also not shown here, is a pole jack or jack and jack stands. What's up guys, today we're gonna be installing a lift kit on our Silverado, so let's get started. So we're gonna start off in the rear here and we're gonna be removing our rear shock so we can install our new one. Now we do have our rear end supported by pole jacks. When you're just replacing the shocks, that's not completely necessary, but it is good practice just to allow for any adjustment you may need to make when installing your new shocks or if you need to move it around a bit to get the old one out. So we'll go ahead and start by removing our bottom shock mounting bolt with our 21 millimeter socket on our impact and our 21 millimeter wrench. You may need to, like I said, adjust your rear up or down to release the tension on the bolt. So you can go ahead and remove that and we'll get the shock out of its mounting point. And we can go ahead and remove the upper bolt as well. So for our upper shock bolt, we're gonna grab a long extension and a swivel socket with our 21 millimeter socket on our impact here. And we're gonna shimmy this through behind the exhaust and up near our charcoal canister because this is kind of a pain to get to. Now the other side, you don't need all this. It's more straightforward. But for this side, you're gonna need some extension. So we'll get that on there, get our bolt loose. So now once you have your bolt loose, you can go ahead and grab onto your shock. We'll go ahead and get our top mounting bolt out. And we'll work our shock out of our mount. So now once you've got that shock out, you can go ahead and repeat this process for the other side. So now we can go in with our new shock and our shock body is gonna to go towards the top and our dust guard and shock rod are gonna to go towards the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and get this into the mounting point and we're gonna reuse our factory shock bolt. Turn it right back in with the top. Get that threaded in and started. Now we are gonna leave this loose for now so we can get our bottom mount in and then we'll tighten them all up at once. So to get the bottom mount in, we are gonna to need to compress the shock a bit. So for that, we're gonna grab a long pry bar. We're gonna go ahead and put it on the bottom part of our lower shock mount. Then we're gonna line our shock up on the pry bar. Kinda of keep tension on it. And go ahead and just push right up. And then work it up. Slide it forward. Now, if you're doing this by yourself, you do want to keep your lower shock bolt in an easily accessible place. You can go ahead and work this kind of in position like so. And we'll drop it back down so it lines up with our mount here. And then we can go ahead and get our factory mounting bolt right back into place. Then we'll go ahead and reinstall our nut. Then we can tighten up our upper and lower shock mounting bolts. So now we're gonna take that same extension, swivel, and 21 millimeter socket on our impact and tighten up our upper mounting bolt here. Now we can take our 21 millimeter socket on our impact and 21 millimeter wrench and tighten down our lower mounting bolt. So now we're gonna grab our provided zip ties and secure our dust cover to our shock. So we'll start up here on our body. And you wanna have the bezels starting right where essentially the shock body ends to the exposed part of the rod. So you can kind of feel that right under here. We'll get our zip tie in position. And while it's still loose like this, we can adjust it. Bring it down. Secure that, and then we'll secure our bottom portion here. This one's going to be a little bit trickier to get into position. We'll kind of bring it around like this and push it 
down onto the mounting point. It is flexible, so don't be too concerned with damaging it. Once we have that secure, go ahead and grab our zip tie again here. Secure that. And then we'll cut the excess off of our zip ties with our angle cutters. Now once you have this process complete for this side, you can go ahead and repeat these same steps for your other side. So now we're ready to go ahead and get our factory strut out. So we're going to start by removing our ABS and brake line brackets from our knuckle. So we're going to grab our 10 millimeter socket on our ratchet and go ahead and pop those out. Go ahead and get that bracket out of place. Then we're going to set our bolt right back in here a couple threads just so we don't lose track of it. And we're going to do the same thing for our brake line bracket over here. Pop that out. Get our brake line bracket out of the way. And we'll get our bolt back in here. Next, we're going to get our sway bar end link loose from our lower control arm. Now, this is something that you want to do for both sides at the same time to allow your sway bar to have enough travel to be out of the way. So we'll grab our 18 millimeter socket on our ratchet, go ahead and pop that nut off. Now this is loose and it won't impede our lower control arm from coming down. Next is our outer tie rod end, so we'll grab our 21 millimeter socket on our impact and go ahead and run that nut off. Set that aside. So now we can go ahead and unseat our outer tie rod end. Now if you don't have a ball joint service tool, which you can rent from any auto parts store, you can take a hammer and smack the outside of the knuckle here a couple times and it will pop loose, um, but it is a much better way to do it with the service tool. Again, readily available to rent from any local auto parts store if you don't have one on hand. So we'll grab our 16 millimeter socket on our impact and slowly run this down and pop our tie rod out of the seat. Now you do wanna be careful, this is gonna be under pressure. So wear safety glasses, keep your face out of danger. There we go. And we'll go ahead and get this fully out of the knuckle here. Set that aside. Next, we can go ahead and remove our upper ball joint mounting nut. So we'll grab an 18 millimeter swivel socket on our impact and go ahead and get that off. Now we're gonna again use our ball joint service tool to pop our upper ball joint out of our knuckle. And for this one, we're gonna grab our 16 millimeter ratcheting wrench because there's not really enough room for an impact in here. So same process as the tie rod. We go ahead and tighten that up and clearly it didn't take much pressure to pop it right out. So now before removing your ball joint fully from your knuckle, you do wanna grab a bungee cord or something to kind of secure the top side of your knuckle so that when you take it out, it doesn't just fall and put excess tension or even pop out your axle from the differential. So we'll go ahead, wrap this around, find a secure point here. Go ahead and lock those on. Then we can go ahead and grab a pry bar, hook that onto our spring here. We'll go ahead and push up on our upper control arm. Get our ball joint free from our knuckle. And slowly let that fall aside. Again, you'll notice there's no excess tension here. Now we have access to our lower strut mounts. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove our lower strut bolts. Now from the factory, these should have threaded clips on the mounting points here and 14 millimeter bolts coming through the bottom. Uh, ours have been changed due to previous modifications and wearing out of bolts over time. So we're going to use our 17 millimeter socket and 15 millimeter wrench to go ahead and get these out. Now you do want to take note that when you do loosen these, your lower control arm will drop more. So you kind of want to support that as you remove your second bolt. Go ahead and remove our first bolt. Get onto our second bolt here. As you can see, our lower control arm has dropped. 
we've got both bolts out, but again, this is supported, so there's no excess tension here or here. So now we can go ahead and remove our upper strut mounting nuts. Now this harness cover is plastic and it is movable, so you can kind of just push it out of the way and get our 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench onto our mounting nuts. And once that first one comes loose, you can just run it off by hand. Now you definitely want to get your rear one off before you take your second front one off, just because it's much easier to get this one off by hand if the other one's holding the strut in place still. So we'll get our last one off. Now once you start really getting this one loose, you do want to support your strut with your other hand. You should be able to raise that back up enough to get this one off, and you can bring it down. And once you have that off, you can go ahead and remove your strut. So now once you've completed this process for this side, you can go ahead and repeat these same steps for the other side. So now we're ready to go ahead and get our new strut assembly in place. Now it does have an indicator on the top at here, that side towards the wheel, obviously, and it can only mount one direction. So we'll go ahead and get our upper mounting studs in place. And we'll go ahead and loosely install our mounting nuts. Once we get that first one on, that'll hold it in place. We'll go ahead and get our other two loosely on here. Now that we have those loosely in place, we'll go ahead and get our bottom mounting bolts on. So now from the factory, as mentioned, you should have those threaded clips on your factory struts. You can go ahead and transfer those over to this one. Now we're gonna use the bolts that we took off of ours. We're gonna go right through the top here, get that lined up. That's not gonna go straight through because of the angle. So you will have to lift up on this, kind of work it into position. The angle is kind of steep here. We'll get our other one lined up and then we'll get those through. So after working them a little bit and jostling around, kind of carrying your angle here, they should just fall right through. And once they're through, we'll go ahead and install our nuts. Again, should be your bolts up through the bottom from the factory. So now we'll go ahead and grab our 17 mil socket and 15 mil wrench and tighten these back down. Now we can go ahead and tighten down our upper mounting nuts using our 14 mil ratcheting wrench. We need to hand thread them down a little bit. So we have those tight, we'll move our harness cover back into position here. So now we can go ahead and get our upper ball joint back into position. So we'll line our knuckle up, upper control arm and ball joint back in. Now we may need our pry bar again for this. Go ahead and line that up. Reinstall upper ball joint nut. Before we fully tighten that down, go ahead and remove our bungee cord. 
Now we'll go ahead and tighten that back down with our 18 mil swivel socket on our impact. Next, we'll go ahead and get our tie rod end back into place. Line that up. Get that sat back down there. Reinstall our nut. And we'll grab our 21 mil socket on our impact and tighten this back down. So now before we reinstall our sway bar end links, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and repeat this whole process for the other side. And then we can go ahead and reinstall our end links. You may even need a pry bar to get them down. So we'll go ahead and put a little bit of pressure on our sway bar end links. Get them in place and reinstall our factory nuts. Then we'll go ahead and use our 18 mil socket on our impact to tighten these back down. And we'll do the same thing for the other side. So now we can go ahead and get our ABS and brake line brackets back into place. Go ahead and get those back in. Get our bolts reinstalled. Same thing for our brake bracket here. And we'll go ahead and tighten those back down with our 10 mil socket on our ratchet. So now once you've got this process complete for this side, you can go ahead and repeat these same steps for the other side. So this kit is an adjustable ride height kit in the front and your kit comes with a spanner to adjust it. Now it's gonna be in this lock ring here down at the base of the spring perch. And if you want to adjust your height up, you're gonna spin this clockwise to go up. Now that is gonna make for a stiffer spring, a little bit of a stiffer ride, but your ride height will also increase. If you wanna go for more of a stock, subtle, softer ride, you're gonna bottom this out, counterclockwise all the way down. Um, now this kit does come with a specified maximum height. You shouldn't go over. Uh, if you wanna read that in your pamphlet of material that you get with your kit to reference that, that's what you wanna stay in the safe range between. But to adjust this, basically you hook your spanner into the slots here, and we're gonna go up. So we're gonna spin ours counterclockwise, then we're gonna continue doing that until we reach our maximum safe height. Alrighty guys, that about wraps up our review and install of our iBrock Pro Truck Coilover Kit Stage 2 for your 19 to current Silverado 1500. Thanks for watching and as always, for everything Silverado, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.